So here what we see is the carotid artery of a pig, 25 kilogram pigs, that was maintained alive. And, the, uh, and what you see uh, at D, what we see A, B, and C, those are filter stuff, and the dust, those are waypoint. So we tell at this specific time we want it to be there. It's all computer control. And uh, D, you see the artifact generated by that. So it took about two years to develop an algorithm that can track the device very, very precisely, position at about between 20 and 30 times per second, which is required. So the correction is done about 20 to 30 times per second. And what you see G here is the mixed with uh, angio image. You see the spinal cord. I don't know where I put my, here we go. So you, you see the spinal cord over there, the leg of the, of the pig. And this is the carotid artery over there. And this device was moved automatically under computer control at the uh, average speed of 10 centimeters per second. Mm. This is a 1.5 millimeter speed. Okay, so you can go even uh, further away from, from the catheter. And then we put the catheter back and we click on the bottom and, with a magnet and bring it back to the catheter to retrieve the device. Okay. So, so the basic equation here, I don't know how much time I have. Uh, sorry. Five minutes. Huh? I have 10 minutes, good, okay. I always talk too much. I'm used to give an hour talk. <laughs> I'm really bad at 20 minutes talk. So here's the basic equation, sir. As you see, because we have to, unfortunately, we're on the, on the world where we have to, as engineers, always follow the law of physics. And you see the force induced on, the, uh, on those carriers, so on the nanoparticle, if you add it together there, it creates an effective volume V ferro there. And uh, this is a gradient stuff. The MRI for, provides 40 millitesla per meter. So. And the, you got M is magnetization saturation of the material. Even with the best material, we're using the best material, you limit with V. And V decreases with Q. And the, the blood flow is, it, it doesn't decrease the Q. It's more linear stuff like that. When you go to smaller blood vessel, the blood flow decreases, but doesn't decrease uh, as fast as the force on the volume. So at some point when I'm going to say that, we're going to have a, a problem with, the, uh, uh, with this thing. So what can we do? We use aggregate cells. So, uh, so many particles together, those are 40 micron, and they, they form an aggregate over there. And you can see if you put gradient to zero millitesla, you go 50%, 50% over there on each side. If you put 400 millitesla, they, they, they pretty much all go in the same. So you can navigate quite effectively there. We're talking about the 35% of a nanoparticle of uh, iron oxide covered with, uh, um, with a small cover nanometers of graphite uh, and with uh, doxorubicin uh, mixed with that. And, uh, and so somebody asked me, so why not just put a magnet there? If we put a magnet outside, what happened is the nanoparticle is the gradient is stronger at the surface of the skin, right, towards the magnet. So first, you don't have any navigation thing. And, and second, it's more trapping stuff. And the thing become more effective near the skin because the magnet is close to the skin. With an MRI there, it doesn't matter how the depth. It's completely independent. It's as effective in middle torso that it is at the surface. So it's a big advantage. Plus, you can track it and correct it, something you cannot do with a magnet over there. So here, with the, this is a release of catheter. Release there, we call it TMMC. And here how they looks like, okay? Those are real wine with doxorubicin, and they contain nanoparticle, and the, uh, with biodegraded polymers, I've been using those, we synthesize those, and we release from a catheter and navigate it into the uh, bloodstream, in this case for the liver. So it have been tests on the uh, rabbit in this case. One other way you can do is control the blood flow with embolization. Those are other types, so we develop different type of those carrier. Uh, those are uh, a device that, with a specific size of the particle, 120 kilos uh, 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 magnetic field, you can eat at three or four degrees, and those are hydrogel based, so they will change volume 50 percent. So you can control the volume of those of those guys. So you can uh, have another mechanism based on heat actuation if you want. So after all those things, we still have all the trick we use, like all that interaction and everything, we still have a limit there. So the problem, because of the volume, the maximum we can do on the human body, technically because of cooling issue, even we use the uh, superconducting coil, everything, very expensive system is about four to 500 millitesla per meters. 
on the rabbit will be different. This is a maximum. It is some safety issue too. I mean, the nervous system start to, okay? And so then we need to do something else. So what we need to increase the population and steering force when we get the smaller blood vessel because the aggregate doesn't work anymore. There's no space to make aggregate there. And to get to the tumor, you know, the, the capillary can go down to a few microns, four microns, stuff like that. So we need to increase that. So example, to my dream and nanomedicine, we're talking about those program control micro scale, uh, you know, and uh, robots and things to do with various tasks. And that's what some views of medical nanobots there. But the 2010 version is a bit different there, okay? First, I'll just show you that something would be, it's electronic chips, okay? And this is uh, uh, probably the smallest uh, solar cell in the world. So uh, we can do near infrared stuff, it penetrate the skin, and activate the electronics with uh, a different sensor, stuff like that. But this thing's still pretty big. I mean, it's uh, 150 microns, 200 microns is the best we can do. It's huge. We're far from the two micron size, stuff like that. We're very far. And we're pushing technology there, you know. We wait like a year to be able to build this thing. And uh, so the question today, and perhaps tomorrow as well, is that should we go with artificial now and if, or natural nanobots, you know? And here's what they propose it, okay. Uh, so uh, the interrogation mark become this bacteria over there, which is about one to two micron in diameter, with so two microns, so a perfect size for the capillaries. And this thing is, uh, so here's, I can ask the question again. Somebody will say, yeah, but we're going back like when they have the horse, it's thing like that versus the car, right? So the question is, should we, should we have a horse with S versus a horse powered, <laughs> right? So it's it's easy question to answer. I will probably go with the car. But if I tell you that this horse 150 times ran run 150 times its body length, you know per second, and you compare what the car can do, it's that well now I'm start thinking maybe the horse might be that's a super horse might be interesting there, right? So here's the same thing. Those bacteria do about the two micron. It can go about 300 micron per second, and this is huge. This is about 10 times faster than the other flagellate bacteria. Okay, so what about natural nanobots designed like artificial nanobots? If you look more carefully, if it'll be a designer, I have the technology to do that. This is the electric motors over there with stator and the rotor. If you look more carefully, it's uh, two bundle of flagella, and each one's got a molecular motors uh, uh, less than 300 hydrogen atom across there, and, stuff. and they turn 360 degrees. And the, you see, it's very similar to the design of that. Actually, it's the same design, exactly the same design. If you look at the Reynolds number, hydrodynamic stuff like that, I would not put the propeller. I would put this, uh, this flagellum over there, which is much more effective and can prove mathematically stuff like that. So we end up, actually, if I had the technology, that's what I would build. And the size of the device would be exactly the same size. So we end up with the same design, pretty much. What about steering? Nanoparticle, 70 nanometers, single magnetic domain, iron oxide, biocompatible. They use it, MRI, and stuff like that. The best crystal you can find. They cannot reproduce crystal better than that. They act a contrast agent. See here, we, we proved that we can see under MRI where they, where they are. We can, it's used magnetotaxis, so if you change the light magnetic field, you act a torque on that, it's a steering wheel. The motor turns full speed, 150 times the body line, you just direct it where you go. Okay. I don't know how I'm doing. I'm, you're over. good, you're good. You're I'm good. good? Yeah, you're good. One and a half minutes. Huh? One and a half minutes. Uh, one and a half minutes, I speed up there. <laughs> okay, this is a, one my student blood. The, this is a red blood cell. There's the white dust under computer control. There's all bacteria. See how easy it is? They move very fast. Impossible to do today with that. That can be done anywhere in human body. Okay, mm -hmm. this is human blood there. What about carrying load? Functionization, drugs, we don't work on that. We have the truck, mm -hmm. you put whatever you want. It works. We attach nanoparticles, we develop antibodies. You mix it, self-assembly. Uh, they reproduce themselves. Very good, very cheap. You go for a coffee, two hours later, population double, right? You, uh, next morning, is there. You have to be very careful, special recipe, they're very hard to cultivate. It took like uh, a while to, if you change the oxygen level at some points, like microelectronics there, they don't obey you anymore. So go over there, they don't go where you want it to go, okay? <laughs>